Alexa, and welcome to The Leftovers. This past Saturday was the third annual Winter's Works exhibit. The Winter's Works is a craft and art show created by Eli Liebman for young and emerging makers to show off and sell their work. Eli Liebman donated a portion of his makings from the Winter's Work exhibit to the nonprofit organization Books Through Bars. We sat down with Eli to discuss the Winter's Works exhibit and his interest in Books Through Bars. My experience with the Books Through Bars program has been fantastic. It's based in um, Turner's. It's called Great Falls Books Through Bars. And it's pretty nascent. It's only been running for maybe a year and a half, like operationally. And it's a wonderful group of people. Uh, once a month, we pack books and send out hundreds of books every month to people all over the country. If people want to get involved, they can show up locally to volunteer day, they can donate money, they can read up and talk to their friends about, you know, improving literacy in America and thinking about incarceration, which is a big fact of American contemporary or and historical society. The impact of books through bars I think is like completely profound. Um, for people on the outside it's like the smallest little window into what life is on the inside and um, I think we go through our lives recognizing or without recognizing how much we have and when you receive a letter from someone who's waited a month to receive three more books I think it's like a profoundly transformative experience just to like be confronted with that. When people are incarcerated, they don't have any expectation that anybody will be thinking of them, maybe beyond their immediate family. And you know, an act of kindness from someone that you don't know is, can be very profound. Eli Liebman is one of the many local artists who use their art to bring awareness and donate to organizations they're passionate about, whether that's through raising money or through showing a message through their art. This was The Leftovers. Thanks for watching. Hey, it's Lulu. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Last year, the boys' basketball team made it deep into the Western Mass Finals, falling just short of the trophy. Despite their rocky start, the boys are hungry for hardware this season and are looking to find themselves with another chance to secure the Western Mass title. The team is composed of fresh varsity players and key veterans that all have their eyes set on one goal this season and are willing to work as hard as they can to accomplish it. I spoke with senior captains Jaden Jondro, Mike McCarthy, and Dylan Demon to talk about their leadership role and what they want to accomplish in their senior season. Um, I feel like for the three of us, since we lost in the championship last year, we would love to get another champion, or we would love to get a championship for this year as our last year of playing basketball in high school. I definitely want to get another crack at it. Uh, it's like, it's not only hard getting the young kids up to speed, it's kind of like a group effort. And like, I know I've been hearing the same stuff from Hart for four years, so I kind of know what he's going to say before he says it, so I just like try to help other kids. I mean, it's still early in the season, so we're pretty much just still going to do us, but start trying to mold as a team and play more together. We haven't played much as a team, like this group, so I think it just might take a little time to get used to each other on the court. My fellow transcript members insisted that I play basketball with the boys, so I decided to challenge two of them to a dunk contest. looking to eat some bird tonight at East Hampton High School at 7 o'clock. In other sports news, boys and girls track have a meet tonight at 645 at Smith. Swimming and diving are away at 4 in Chicopee Comp and wrestling has a meet tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in Longmeadow. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Today is International Monkey Day. While this holiday is mainly about monkeys, it also celebrates other non-human primates such as apes, tarsiers, and lemurs. In other news,
After the death of longtime Massachusetts Education Commissioner Mitchell Chester, a new commissioner has stepped into office. His name is Jeff Riley, and we had the privilege of interviewing him in our very own high school regarding achievement gaps in public schools and his goals on implementing the next generation MCAS. I guess what I would say is, um, first and foremost, how important it is to be bilingual or trilingual or more in the world we live in today, and so we need to celebrate learning multiple languages. Uh, with that said, we know the research tells us that it takes between four and seven years to be proficient in a second language, and yet we test children after only one year in the country. And so that can create the impression that students aren't doing as well as perhaps they are, but it would be the equivalent of dropping me off in mainland China and giving me the uh, Mandarin MCAS after one year. I'm probably not going to do as well as if, I, if you gave me four or five years in the country to learn the language. So we have to kind of look through it through that lens. Um, with that said, what my, part of my job is to find ways to accelerate second language learning. And you look at like a program like in Lasse at Lawrence High School, which has been featured nationally uh, by some amazing educators that are up there. They're doing work to um, figure out how to get high school kids who are new to the country to learn English faster. Part of what I said when I came to this job about five months ago is we need to take some time to, to assess the new accountability system, right? Uh, I came in kind of at the tail end. It had already been approved at the board. And I asked that we take a year or two to look at um, this system and see, is it actually meeting the needs of our children or not? Uh, and so, for instance, already we've seen some students who have been um, uh, coded the wrong way because they might have been medically excused absent and the, and the schools have been um, kind of put in a category of designation of not meeting participation rates and if a child's in the hospital they shouldn't be punished for not meeting participation rates. so they're, they're we're going to take the time to look at it this year I told uh, the state that we would not name any level four schools or level five districts those are the schools that supposedly get in trouble uh, because I think it's important anytime you start something new to really uh, work the kinks out and see if there's any bugs or unintended consequences and then go forward after you tweak it. We also sat down with current ELL students who had taken the MCAS before the next generation test was implemented to understand the concerns that needed to be addressed. A gran desventaja porque por ejemplo no no tener mucho conocimiento en el idioma y por ejemplo yo cuando recién llegué tomé el ENCAS y lo he tomado cuatro veces y no lo puedo pasar todavía. Por para mí está bien todo como lo están haciendo, pero sale difícil por la cuestión del inglés. En El Salvador era diferente, donde, porque sí tomas un examen, pero no lo tomas en tu idioma, es mucho mejor, entiendes más. Wow, our schools are in good hands. Thanks for watching and stay in school. I'm Amelia Tamayo and this was In Other News. Bye! Hello, my name is Gabe and welcome to After the Bell. Nowadays, it seems like anyone can be a musician. Well, maybe not anyone, but certainly some people. I sat down with Northampton High School's very own Tommy Hart, an actual real-life musician, to discuss his experience as a young, unsigned artist. When I started, you know, I wasn't making any money, so I was just, I had a computer and I had an audio interface and I just tried to make it work without having to go to a professional. I just like mess around with a lot of different things. So I've got like, I'm working on a metal album right now. But I'm also working on a pop album and I've also got like pop punk songs and all different types of material that I'm, I'm always working on because I'm inspired by lots of different kinds of music. I, I do not like putting myself in a box creatively at all. Um, I think it was Ice-T that said, I feel really bad for anyone who listens to just one kind of music, you know? And I listen to 90s rap and melodic death metal and, you know, indie rock and stuff. So it's just, I'm getting inspiration from all over the place. So I don't see why I should keep all the stuff I'm doing in one box. There's like so many streaming, or not streaming, like distribution platforms that you can go on. And so I use DistroKid, which is $20. You release any music you want within that year, $20 a year. Um, and it's really easy if you know how to go about it, but I think a lot of people just don't know how to go about it and haven't like reached out and found um, you know, the different places you can get that done. 
I definitely want to pursue it as a career in some capacity. Um, whether that's being a musician or a producer or promote, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely something that I work very hard at and I'm very passionate about. So I think I definitely want to pursue it in my later life, yeah. Talk about a guy who really does it all. I'll see you guys next week after the bell. activities. Unacceptable. Those last two pieces of evidence were everything I needed. My theory was now a reality. I knew there was a secret fight club here at NHS, but was I satisfied yet? No, not even close. So I decided to organize a meeting with the head of Key Club just to see their face when I tell them I know the truth. I think I know what you really do there. Fight club, right? Uh, volunteer work. She couldn't fool me. I could see straight through her lies. So I decided to go to the meeting anyway, just to beat down on some high school seniors. I know what you're doing here. Welcome to Fight Club, where we fight hunger. 